in a cult, too, if you don't know the signs. And, and I do believe Democrats most especially are in a deep cult that they really don't uh, and know about and aren't really aware of. And I leave the Republicans alone more because I do respect people more that are like, this is what we are, this is what we're about, this is what we're against. Whereas I find that the Democrats are really pretty much almost against all the same things. They're against um, changing the world for the better. And, and they're for keeping a system in place. If you think about this country, I don't know of any other country in the world that was settled predominantly by people who were coming to practice their faith. They came here because they were not allowed to practice their particular faith in their own country. And so they came here mostly from Europe and they set up a country that was based on Judeo-Christian principles. When I say Judeo-Christian, the Mosaic laws, 10 commandments, and the teachings of Jesus Christ, the morale, the morals and, and teachings of Jesus Christ. That's, that's what our founding documents are based upon. It's in our DNA. You know, if you think of other countries like Italy and Greece and China and Turkey and places like that, they've all sort of changed over time. I mean, they've been, they've been there for, cent, for millennia in many cases. And their culture has sort of evolved over time. But not us. We came here and created a blank slate. We, we birthed a nation from nothing. I mean, there was nothing here. I mean, yes, we have Native Americans, but, if, but candidly, that, that, there isn't much Native American culture in American culture. It, it was born of the people who came here pursuing religious liberty to practice their faith, to live as they ought to live, and have the freedom to do so. Religious liberty. Those are the two bulwarks of America. Faith and freedom. I mean, you hear it all the time, now, faith and freedom, faith and freedom. But it is what makes America unique. Up to Zora's death, the movie is deadly dull. Blade Runner fans were in for a treat during the Academy Awards on Sunday night when Harrison Ford decided to delight the Oscar crowd with the scornful studio notes about his beloved 1982 sci-fi film. While presenting the award for best film editing at the ceremony, the iconic actor took the liberty of reading from a crumpled up piece of paper the rather scathing studio notes about Blade Runner. Opening too choppy. Why is this voiceover track so terrible? He sounds drugged. Were they all on drugs? Though the actor did not say right away which film he was talking about, fans of the Ridley Scott picture knew immediately. Why do we need the third cut to the eggs? The synagogue music is awful on the street. Of the many gripes was Ford's mention of the voiceover track. Fans of the film know Ford hated the voiceover track, which the studio insisted be added to better help viewers understand what was going on. It was removed from later cuts of the film. Of the many notes Ford shared on stage, he ended the bit with quite the zinger. This movie gets worse every screening. <laughs> That movie was called Blade Runner. While not a box office hit at the time, Blade Runner has gone on to become a Ford fan favorite and even spawned a 2017. It's important to um, have the hospital death rate and the total death rate. It's worth remembering again that the ONS rates are people who got COVID on their death certificate. It doesn't necessarily mean they were infected because many of them haven't been tested. So we just need to understand the difference. Are you fucking um, kidding me? This part of the book to write. And he grabbed me. Thank you.